One of the Caribbean's finest musicians, Arturo Tapin, Barbadian saxophonist, considered one of the smoothest horn players in the world. His claim to fame is the creation of a unique sound called Roots Reggae Jazz Fusion, which he pioneered in the early 1990s. And if you don't know what Roots Reggae Jazz Fusion is, you might just want to stick around. Carib Nation is up next. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, there is one clear choice. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. Both people inside and outside are very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you've traveled the journey. <laughs> one television organization brings America close to the people, stories and events that affects Caribbean life. Get close, get answers, get Carib Nation. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. I'm Daris Dean. Today I have the distinct pleasure of talking with one of the Caribbean's most distinguished artists, Barbadian saxophonist Arturo Tapin. Arturo, thank you so much for coming to Carib Nation and welcome. Thank you. I've listened to you for so many years and as you know my sister was one of your greatest fans for many, <laughs> many years and so I got introduced to you very early. And the last time you were in Washington was quite some time ago, wasn't it? Well, as a solo act, yes, but I come often with Roberta Flack. What is it like to have the opportunity to perform with such legends, and what does it feel like? Well, I was very fortunate that the music that I was first attracted to when I was a, a teenager um, was um, a lot of compositions by Ralph MacDonald, mm -hmm. a percussionist of Trinidadian descent, mm -hmm. grew up in Harlem. And he wrote all those hits like Where's the Love and um, Wine Light and Just the Two of Us. My first album was Grover Washington's Wine Light. And I used to play that record every day after school. So I knew all that music very well. And by the time I got to America and I met Ralph and I met Roberta, and I had already understood uh -huh. what was required because the style of music mm. I was very comfortable with. So musically, it wasn't really much problems fitting in. Um, of course, I had to learn uh, the, the ways of the road and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, uh, but what I really did learn from Roberta was about restraint. She mm. has so much star power. Mm -hmm. When she gets on stage, it's all about the music. There's no... There's literally no, no song and dance. Yes, it is about yes, music. music you yes. know. Whereas in the Caribbean, um, if you're not known, you basically have to fight to prove yourself. So you might end up um, doing a little too much than necessary I with see. a song. In all the performance. Exactly. I see. But uh, Roberta taught me, you know, the aspect mm. of uh, staying true to the music, and um, you know, her band is full of like some of the greatest musicians mm -hmm. of all time, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so working with her was like a whole another university. Yeah, yeah, really, wow, what an opportunity.
I had the pleasure of working with his father at CBC and his talent is photography. But I knew he liked music as yes. well. I see you've got his uh, signature beard. <laughs> was music a big part of your f growing up at home? I was very fortunate. I, I always told people that um, if it wasn't for my dad's record collection, I probably wouldn't be playing music. Mm. Um, at the time he played it, when I was a little kid, every Sunday, every Saturday, all day, mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra, Cannonball, Adelie, John Coltrane, Miles yeah. Davis, Jimmy Cliff, you know, all this music that I was wondering, please, would he stop? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Count Basie, Duke right. Ellington, but as I really got into music, and even when I went to study, I realized all that's in my subconscious, and that's what has helped yeah. me. Wow. You know, it's all part of me. Your cool, laid-back, soft-spoken personality mm -hmm. is so deceptive. When you get on stage, <laughs> you're a whole different person. There's excitement, there's mm -hmm. dynamism. Where does that come from? Um, I don't know. That's, uh, when, I, when I have a song, when I have a song, and I become very attached to it, mm -hmm. I want to Basically, I want to I want to turn it inside out. I want to find <laughs> how many different avenues I can take down this particular road, you know, to get to this particular destination. And when I've, then I'll try another one. I'll try another one. And once I have musicians like I did tonight, Lloyd mm -hmm. Wilson on organ, who has these yes, great, great ears, ears and yeah. Buddy Williams, so much experience. He worked with everybody: Michael Jackson, Manhattan mm -hmm. Transfer, wow. Luther Vandross, everybody. Um, he makes it, they make it very easy mm -hmm. to um, express yourself and not worry about anything going wrong. Mm -hmm. So I just jump in head first, you know. Wow. Why the saxophone? I know that you play more than the saxophone. But... Um, well, I actually started on violin. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of classical music, and, um, but it was always solo, you know. You practice a couple of pieces for a year, you did an exam, but I never had the opportunity to play in a band. Mm -hmm. I joined the cadets and I played clarinet, like marching band mm -hmm. stuff. And I always wanted to improvise. I never wanted to play what was written. <laughs> what was I used to get in lots of trouble and <laughs> hence it never promoted me to first clarinet, even though I felt I should be there, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the discipline. I always wanted to play what I was hearing as opposed to what the guy composed. Anyway, around age 15 or 16, um, my cousin at the time was the manager of band and she invited me to join the band and I auditioned on clarinet, it was a jazz band, mm -hmm. and they liked what I played, but didn't like the clarinet. Ah. My brother was playing saxophone, so I kind of sneaked it out of the house and I started <laughs> playing it. I actually didn't even like it very much because I was only accustomed to the purity of the yeah. clarinet and the violin. But the more I got into the saxophone, I realized it was even closer to the human voice mm -hmm. than probably any other instrument, and I felt very comfortable after a while, and I really worked at it. And Eventually I got to Berkeley at age 19 and that really helped me a lot, mm -hmm. getting exposure to really to the best teachers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, it certainly has proven perfectly <laughs> fitted for you. <laughs> Thank You've you. You've done a great job Thanks. with that. You've performed with such a wide variety of artists from R&B to jazz, the, the Anita Bakers to Boney James and Ellis Marsalis. Which is it more difficult to play with? Is it? Is, or is it difficult at all, just different? Uh, there are different challenges. Like I say, when you're working with uh, an R&B singer, um, you know, it, there's a little more restraint necessary. Um, space, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, like, it's not a rock and roll gig where right. you're full on, but you still have to have that subtle intensity. Mm. I guess what they call a quiet fire. Because mm. you still want to draw the audience in. You don't want to put them to sleep. But you don't want to blow them up. Yes, exactly. Whereas, I guess, other types of jazz, 
it's more full on, you know, mm. like let it all out. Right, right. That's a great discipline, I suppose. Yes. It's but it's, you know, sometimes it's music is like food. Mm. Sometimes you want a lot of spice, <laughs> sometimes you just want some fruit. Right. <laughs> Um, you have been known for the roots reggae jazz mm -hmm. fusion, um, and that was your way of expanding the Caribbean side of yourself. Yeah, well, when I left Berkeley, I basically spent most of my time trying to figure out how to play bebop. And um, like I was saying at the concert tonight, when I um, grew tired of just doing restaurants and hotels in Barbados, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get out of Barbados. Um, and I realized Jamaica was the way because Jamaica was on the lips of everybody. Right. And it didn't make much sense to me at that time to try to get out of the Caribbean playing bebop mm, or playing I other see. types of jazz. And I, one of my favorite music is reggae. Mm. So I uh, spent a lot of time in Jamaica and I was fortunate to get some distribution through Tough Go and Sadella Marley and mm -hmm. Lady Bob Marley, 50th birthday bash. And wow. Uh, established a pretty good relationship, so it kind of gave me a, you know, gave me a stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. Like, this is one of our guys. Right people, you know, yeah. I can really play this reggae stuff. It's yeah. not <laughs> bogus. You know, it's not veneer. It's right. a real deal. Right. And um, I, you know, I, I stuck at it, and um, it's got me lots of gigs all over the world. Mm. And um, I actually had the privilege in, I think it was around 2003. 2006 maybe yeah where um, I was invited to Jamaica and they gave me an excellence in the arts awards mm -hmm. basically That's because great. of my yeah. contribution to reggae and jazz right. you know. doubt are a big part of the jazz scene in the Caribbean. We have jazz festivals in Barbados, Jamaica, St. Kitts, St. Lucia. Uh, are you satisfied with the caliber of jazz that we have in the Caribbean? And I know this has helped tourism, but has it helped enough? Well, I've seen an improvement, especially St. Lucia. St. Lucia has had a lot of exposure to great artists who have done workshops. Mm -hmm. And I mean, maybe 10, 15 years ago when I went to St. Lucia, you know, there were a handful of musicians I could call on to put a group together. But mm -hmm. now there are dozens and dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of really good musicians in St. Lucia. And I believe it's because of the jazz festival. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with the jazz festival is not just in the Caribbean, but most places they've gotten so big, big yeah. it's hard to sell a bebop group playing some very intellectual, some very heady music mm. for 10,000 people, yeah, can't right? Please the masses, you know, they're usually, they were originally meant for smaller venues. Right. So I guess these festivals have become so big, you have such big sponsors, you know, mm. you need the right. R&B acts and pop acts to fill the halls and yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, did you perform in concerts at school and things like that? Yes, I did lots of concerts at school, but it was always classical music. Mm. Yeah.
what about young people? Uh, are we turning on young people enough to music education? Do we have enough music education in the schools to keep them interested so that we can have more like you coming up? Um, in Barbados in particular, we have a, 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 a two-year program, an associate's degree program, where there's a lot of exposure to modern music, jazz, uh, harmony, engineering, producing, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the classes are not huge, but it's been going for a number of years, and I have seen a lot of young, really good young students come out of that. Not everybody's going to be a player. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Not everybody will uh, want to be a performer, but I've seen um, engineers and songwriters, a couple mm -hmm. of singers and horn players. And, um, I, I'm not sure about every island, but mm -hmm. in particular, Barbados has been really investing in music. Mm -hmm. your best performance so far? I would have to say my three minutes on stage with Luther Vandross, hmm. his last performance really? at Radio City Music Hall, which was fortunately recorded. It's on an album, uh, 2003, live at Radio City Music Hall. Hmm. Uh, it was a very nervous moment for me because um, he basically called me out on stage, put wow. me on this this uh, what they call a, a 
wedding cake kind of thing, steps up, steps down, mm -hmm. right in the middle. And you know, he's like the Pavarotti of R&B. Yeah. Yeah. So f to have that opportunity wow. to Read do that, that was, yeah, oh that was Phenomenal. special. Yeah. What is your favorite place to perform and why? Well, strange as it may seem, I like performing with a small jazz trio in a tiny little shop with <laughs> musicians and friends and stuff where we just play one song for half an hour. Wow. You know, there's no pressure. We're just, just experimenting. and just chilling. Yeah, we do that. Like, we go up in the country in Barbados, mm -hmm. St. Joseph, a little rum shop. The guys are roasting breadfruits. It's, it's not a concert <laughs> at all. It's just a fun day. But Wow. That's where you get the best music. Best music. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool, simple, yeah. easy way to go. Yes. Um, those awards, you mentioned you got the um, Music Award for Excellence in Jamaica. What do such awards mean to you? It meant quite a lot for me because I've actually never received one at home. Hmm. So to receive something like that from Jamaica, an island which has so much music, it's own, it yeah. really encouraged me and I, I you know, I, I really felt proud about it. You think that you stand out <laughs> in a place like Jamaica. Exactly. Where you've, you've got yes. so much uh, competition. So exactly. To speak. Yeah. jazz scene is, is going to take hold and, and really take its place in the Caribbean? Well, there are lots of young musicians who want to play. And if they listen to the radio, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of music for musicians. Mm -hmm. There's lots of music for rappers. Right, that's You know, true. there are lots of maybe pop and alternative R&B singers, but for guys who want to play trumpet and trombone, there's not a lot of music on the radio. Mm. And really the only way for them to express themselves is if they're playing horns in a calypso tent, uh, yeah. or if they decide to play jazz. So there are um, some youngsters I know who have been working very hard at mm -hmm. becoming jazz musicians. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. You performed for presidents, Clinton and Obama. What was that like? That must have been quite a thrill for you. Um, well, well, you know, well, we, I guess President Obama was very special because he's the first mm -hmm. African American president. But um, obviously, President, president Clinton. Clinton being a saxophone player, right. he actually yeah. stopped everything he was doing, <laughs> paid close attention, wow. and you know, he was into it. Yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun, especially when um, I left the stage and went for a walk because I had a wireless mic and mm -hmm. uh, the security didn't like that mm -hmm. very much. So they were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then he spun around like, you know, 
yes, yes. It, it turned, I didn't get arrested. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's a lucky thing, because once the Secret Service yeah. take hold of you, have yes. to help you. But, well, it's mm -hmm. been a great pleasure talking mm -hmm. with you, and um, you. I really am glad to see that you're doing so well, and I wish you all the very best. And what, what else is new? What is, what's next? Well, I've got a couple albums out, and um, I teach some young people in Barbados. I, mm -hmm. I do it for free. Mm -hmm. um, I've, by doing that, I've been able to f meet lots of musicians mm -hmm. who probably would not have um, come across my path. As a result, I've got like some really good um, bands that I work with, with little trios and different formats. We have a music in Barbados called Tuck Music. Mm -hmm. So I've started something called Tap Into Tuck, Tap wow. Into Tuck, where I, I take that. the traditional Tuck band and I add like pan around the neck and horns and hmm. tuba and stuff. It's kind of like a Ooh, Barbadian, Caribbean version of New Orleans marching band. Wow. We do traditional folk music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well, that sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, all the best to you and thanks again so much for Thank taking you. the time to talk about it. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. And there you have it. A look at Arturo Tapin, Barbados saxophonist. And I hope by now you have had an opportunity to get a better understanding of what Roots Reggae Jazz Fusion is all about. Until next time, I'm Dara Thank you so much for watching.